Yes. Um, I have a, a couple of clients that, um, that purchase products, a lot of products from China, some from Europe. Um, and last year, one of their clients decided that it was cheaper to make the product in the United States. And they're actually seriously considering yeah. the manufacturing facility in the U.S. And, and the gist of what this fellow said is that, um, you know, China's had its day. It's uh -huh. lost some parts. Um, they, you know, they've, they've sold fast and they've sold cheap and they've cheated everybody. Structurally, they've got major problems and eventually it's going to start to reverse and come back to the U.S. And I've even seen that some places. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thought is that whatever we think is the way it is, it won't be. You know, it's that thing you see in, in college. The only constant is change. And, uh, but whatever we think today is, it won't be tomorrow. Whatever, whatever we take for granted for today, it's not going to be for tomorrow. It's today, today, right now, we think, you know, China this, they're the next superpower, but it won't be that. Yeah. You know, or it won't last, or whatever. There's opportunity, there'll be opportunity. There might be this whole groundswell of Americans going, I want to buy American products, and, or companies saying, putting on their product, not made in China. You know, and that might be enough to generate people who are at Walmart going, oh, I wouldn't mind not made in China. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, there, I mean, if we if we could figure out, there's a lot of research, a lot of talk, not a lot of research, but a lot of talk about, you know, it's a, it's, it's a cliche, but um, um, mass customization. So that, you know, you take, my dad My dad always talks about, he's go to a shoe store and they, they would play with the x-ray machine, they x-ray their foot. Uh, the shoe store, you know, nobody's got foot cancer. But, um, but you know, if you were to have a laser laser measurements where you could have all your clothes custom made perfectly for you right on the spot, uh, mass customization, you know, that's a lot of technology there. That could be a, a change, change the whole dynamic. Um, as well as additive manufacturing instead of, you know, doing the grinding of the uh, blades and all the machine tools that, that reduce the size of a, a block, you, you add in. This is all hugely technologically oriented, but um, you could then start producing in lots of one, uh, but also in, you know, for, for mass, mass uh, consumption. So there, we have, there are a lot of opportunities if we had an R&D enterprise that was focused, we don't have that, if we had an R&D enterprise that was focused on these new possibilities. But just the cost issue, I mean, it's getting to be cheaper and cheaper to produce in the United States, and, and labor is not going to be, in the United States, labor's cheap um, compared to what it was. Um, so you, I, I remember reading years ago that the cheapest warehouse space in the, in the world, the industrialized world, was in Kansas City. Yeah. What do you think the current administration's appetite is for taking on the Chinese by way of their currency? I think for what really, the thing that bothered me most when I went into my little stupor going through the stimulus bill wasn't the fact that uh, it was $787 billion just thrown away. It was that we now lost our leverage over China because we're going to have to borrow this money from them. And you look at the, uh, I remember when Obama came in, the, the big test was going to be whether or not in the currency report that was produced annually, or, or semi-annually, every six months by the Treasury Department to determine whether or not um, China was a manip manipulator of its currency. Uh, they punted and they didn't, they didn't uh, call them out for manip manipulating their currency. Um, I think, you know, that's what really bothered me most about that stimulus bill is now, now we're serfs, or, you know, they own us. It, it was that was the most bothersome thing. Why did you do this? This was not the way. To, this was not the way to solve our economic problems. But the, you know, the Democrats had pent up demand. They hadn't been in power since '94. They had all this crap they wanted to fund, and it just went. Boom. You know, Obama was asleep or didn't know any better. Um, just talking platitudes, and uh, I didn't. You know, I, I'm reading. Samuel Johnson, this um, old English author, I uh, started reading some of the old English authors, not seriously per se, but just kind of like dipping into it. And Samuel Johnson says that don't, you can't judge a man. This He wrote this in 1750 when he was broke and he was doing this dictionary project, this huge dictionary project. He says you cannot judge a person based on what they say. This is a cliche now, but then he wrote it in such a way that it wasn't a cliche. I don't know if it was a cliche then. But he says, you cannot judge a person based on what they say 
or what they say they feel. You can only judge a person based on what they do. And so I have to judge based on what, what we're going to see from the Obama team. And I've not really seen the commitment yet to this. Yes, sir? Does uh, manufacturing have a champion in Washington? Who is it? And if we don't, how do we get one? Scott, you understand? Here's one of them. Uh, Alan's pretty good. Alan works for the United States Business and Industry Council. Yeah, uh, we have a few, but not like we used to. Um, yeah, here's one. The local congressman, Tim Ryan, from my perspective, I don't think that I'm pressing the phone. It's hard to hear back. Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan uh, is one of the co-chairs of the manufacturing office of the National Board of Managers. And as Richard said, you know, there's not enough of them. Sherry Brown is good, but again, you know, you just, you have to have leadership, you have to just go, boom. And um, we just need leadership there. I mean, I was talking with a friend of mine at lunch, who's kind of like this Washington insider, and I said, our Congress is totally, this is totally dysfunctional. Thomas Jefferson would blow the place up. Um, and he says, no, it's not dysfunctional. It's what we lack is leadership. And, um, but I think uh, there's there's a new manufacturing czar, special assistant to the president for manufacturing, Ron Bloom, who came out of the United Steelworkers, who was trying to, as, as a financial ways, I think we had, you know, I've seen it in a half a dozen meetings now, he doesn't say a word. Uh, sure. Oh, well, he's on the inside. I'm, you know, I'm the press, so everyone's scared of me. <laughs> well, my advice for you guys is just, no, wait, I have to think. Because I was watching the speech last night and I thought, you know, the same yo yo, you're on your own. <laughs> That's what came through my mind. Um, I think we need people to be engaged. And I asked you about if you read the stimulus bill or if you read the, the uh, jobs bill. I read, I read this stuff. I think it's really important for you guys to read the health care bill, to be engaged. Uh, it's online. You can you'll search and you'll find it. Search and find it's a, it's hard to find, frankly. The appropriations bill is yeah. See, this is the problem with our government. Our government is not transparent, and the least transparent of all of our branches of government, besides the judiciary, but uh, is the legislative branch. They're the least transparent. That's the hardest place to find information. Even the White House is terrible. Uh, Scott was just saying you can't even find this stupid report online. This, this uh, framework, this presidential framework for revitalizing American manufacturing. Well, the reason you can't find a line is because the, there's a typo in the URL, like it didn't spell manufacturing correctly. Um, but I think you have to get engaged. You have to read the health care bill. You have to read the appropriations bills. And then you have to, based on the knowledge that you have, you have to go at these guys. You have to go at them. And it. It's all over, though. It's like a revitalization of America. We have to have a rebirth of America, and it has to happen at the grassroots level. A lot of people that I deal with going, why isn't there a grassroots reaction to this jobs crisis? Why is it the Tea Party people screaming? Why aren't the people without benefits or without health care or without you know, jobless? Why? What's, I, what, what is it? Are we like hooked on sugar, salt, and fat? Are we all the people who are the least well off, the most well fed in terms of caloric intake? Is it Prozac? Are we depressed? So we take Prozac and go, oh, okay, whatever, we don't have to deal with it. Uh, I don't know what it is, but there's no real rage. Uh, or maybe there is, but it's just quiet. People are in their house going, it's um, But I think at some point that's got to turn into like a real movement 